Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's such a joy to connect with each one of you this morning. Uh, so glad that you could connect on the Mentoring Hour call, which we will have every week. Um, uh, we want to take this time to uh, especially welcome our uh, faculty uh, and, of course, you know, yeah, all, all the students who are connecting with us. Uh, let us pray, and then I will share briefly about the mentoring call, uh, uh, what it is all about, and then we will uh, move ahead with the session for today. So let's begin with the word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for this opportunity that we can connect online. God, we thank you for this platform where we can share our hearts. Or the things. Um, even as we do this, that uh, your Holy Spirit will minister to our hearts, strengthen each one of us, O God, in our faith, strengthen us, Father, in uh, this journey that we are making with you. Lord, thank you for uh, every single uh, student who's on this call and each one who is uh, trying to connect to the call. Father, Lord, we pray that uh, we will have a blessed time together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Uh, so, I know that we have um, students who have enrolled for the current uh, current um, courses at APC Bible College. Uh, we also have students who are continuing with us from last year. Uh, what we generally do on this call is that we take some time to answer questions that uh, uh, any of the students have. Uh, now, these questions can be pertaining to our Christian life, uh, or they could be about Christian ministry. Uh, they can be questions from what we are learning uh, in our different courses. They can be questions outside or beyond the courses that we are learning. Uh, but it's a wonderful platform for open discussions and to just hear from each other. So uh, I want to encourage uh, uh, all the students to please feel comfortable. If there's something that you've been thinking about, you can just go ahead and ask uh, the question. Our faculty will do their best to give you uh, biblical answers regarding that particular topic. So that's how we generally go through the mentoring hour that happens. Uh, so I will leave the time open for us to begin to ask questions. Um, yes, we have uh, some more students joining in, so that's nice. Uh, that's wonderful. But if there's anything that you know, uh, one of you want to begin with uh, a question, then please feel free. You can go ahead, and uh, yeah, we will be more than happy to address that question. So maybe before we get into the questions, uh, how has Bible College been so far uh, since it's just been you know about uh, ten days maybe uh, since our orientation? Uh, I know that this must this is a very special decision for each of you. Uh, we'd love to hear from you about how you're liking it, how, how the uh, last 10 days have been. Is God ministering to you uh, through the classes that, that you are attending every day? So would somebody like to share about that while we wait you know, for some questions to come in soon? Please feel free. You can unmute and speak. So all of us will be able to hear you. Maybe I'll begin with uh, our faculty. I'll uh, request uh, Pastor Selena. Uh, uh, Pastor Selena, how has it been the last 10 days for you as uh, you're teaching your courses? Uh, good morning, everyone. And uh, just glad to be back 
teaching at the Bible College. It's uh, it's a privilege and a responsibility, uh, and it's a huge learning experience for me as well. Because just going back through the same courses and preparing uh, brings back so much of uh, truths from God's word, uh, which kind of uh, uh, enlightens me and also refreshes my understanding. Um, and also ministers to me in, you know, in my life and uh, the areas of struggles and challenges that I'm going through, uh, just powerful reminders of the truth from God's word. And we know God's word is um, powerful and active and um, encourages and strengthens and builds us. So uh, for me, teaching uh, is a learning for myself. Uh, just uh, learning all the truths, reiterating the truths, uh, also getting into a deeper understanding of God's word and also how it uh, ministers to me uh, in my, uh, you know, walk of life and how um, God speaks to me even as I prepare and I just enjoy it, even though it's, you know, it takes a lot of time and energy, but I enjoy the whole uh, process and, uh just uh, praying that, you know, I just be excellent in what I do and uh, how I communicate God's truth, uh, just impart it uh, into your lives, just asking the Holy Spirit for his leading and guiding. Yes. Thank you, Pastor Nancy. Thank you, Pastor Selena. Uh, such a blessing to uh, hear that though you are ministering, God is ministering to you as you prepare and as you uh, teach these courses. Uh, so God bless you. Uh, that's an inspiration. Uh, and uh, we, we pray God's wisdom over your life as you continue these courses. Thank you, Pastor Nancy. Thank you. So um, uh, I'm leaving this time open. If there's anyone who'd also like to share how it's been last over the last 10 days, uh, you, you may share. And if there's anyone with a question, please uh, feel comfortable. Either you can post it in the chat or you can just unmute uh, and ask the question. Good morning, Pastor Nancy. This is Esther from Hyderabad. Hello, um, Esther. Good morning. Welcome good morning. to the Mention uh, Call. Yeah, I'm really amazed to just as you're saying the past 10 days, it's just like yesterday. <laughs> and uh, like the way we have begun, uh, you know, laying axe to the root, uh, you know, uh, jealousy, lust, uh, you know, all these things which are really uh, most neglected. But, you know, it's really set a tone for beginning the courses and uh, what I loved. And I'm so glad God has given the opportunity is uh, the love and the passion and the uh, gentleness which all the faculty are showing is like so close to, you know, feeling the presence of God and uh, the way you speak and the way uh, it's a it's an easy material to understand. However, the way it's being explained and portrayed, you know, we feel such a mighty anointing of God. A every word has life. And it's speaking to us directly. And I, I'm really glad and I'm so thankful to God that he has given me this opportunity to, uh, you know, uh, enroll in here and also make time to uh, attend the classes regularly. So I thank and glorify God and I thank the, uh, all the people who are behind APC and such a professional, such a flawless and uh, uh you know committed and loving passionate work i mean many words i'm using but all of them are from the heart and uh, i'm really really blessed by this uh, and really uh, like it's 10 days i'm really asking myself is it but thank you so much for being there for us i'm sure it'll be an enriching and uh, make us very close to god and uh, he will definitely enable all these learnings in our lives to be uh, you know, portrayed and uh, not on just listen, but, you know, put into action whenever we get a chance. So thank you so much for this opportunity, Pastor Nancy. Thank you. Thank you, Esther. Um, so grateful to you that you shared this morning. Uh, it's an encouragement for all of us uh, here as a team to, to hear what you're saying. Uh, grateful for your uh, very kind words. Uh, let's continue to pray. This is uh, God's work. Uh, through his spirit and we really want to uh, see that um, 
play out. We really want to see God work in all of our lives. So let's continue to pray for the courses as they unfold. Uh, let it be a blessing to uh, each one of us. Thank you, Esther. Uh, Lucy has uh, shared her comment here in the chat. She says, uh, Sister, for me, it's been a great journey as I attended the classes on faith. It strengthened me at the situations I passed through the week. God just asked, uh, God's just asking me to cling on to the promises, just to stand on it. As God spoke to, uh, from the very first day, sickness is not unto death. It's only to glorify God and my Lord through. Uh, thank you, sister. Uh, she has added, uh, I want some other word, which is more than thank you to praise God and also to learn God's word daily, building me and working upon me. Uh, upon my faith. Uh, wow, that, that's what we look forward to. Yes, we are learning God's word, but we want us to become um, hungry by the day and to just have a greater sensitivity, a greater capacity to receive more uh, of what God is pouring out. So yes, let's, let's continue to uh, seek the Lord for more of his word, to learn more of his word. Thank you, Lucy. I really appreciate uh, your feedback there. Um, so if anyone has a question, we can uh, uh, begin to take up questions. Uh, thank you to those who are continuing to share about your experience here. Daniel says, actually, I was looking for a Bible college which had distance learning. But as far as I have searched, I didn't find any. <coughs> Sorry. Some people told it's not possible to find any such college. I found some college, but uh, the college was focusing on their own uh, denomination. But after attending APC, I could feel that APC is all about keeping Jesus first without any other agenda. All the staff are so dedicated towards teaching, study material is so good. Praise God for every good thing. Uh, thank you, Daniel. Yeah, we, we praise God um, for the opportunity. To minister and we continue to pray that God will strengthen us. I'm glad to know of your experience. Uh, so if anyone has a question, please feel free. You can you can pose it to the faculty here. Sister, I want to say something. Ah uh, yes, yes, Sister Gertrude, please go ahead. Yes, I just want to thank God for the and for all the faculty members in uh, Bangalore APC College for giving me this opportunity. Well, I'm um, a senior person and I'm uh, now presently uh, calling from Chicago. It's night here, night time. And I've come because my daughter was sick and to be with them. So I felt that uh, teaching was excellent because there's so many things. I had done a Bachelor in Divinity, but I did self-study and uh, I couldn't un uh, find out so many details on my own. But I'm so glad that I joined this and I'm getting to know the details of who we are in Christ, about worship, prayer, intercession, all these things I'm learning from scratch because this is my desire and my quest to learn. Even at my age, I am so interested and i'm waiting for this opportunity to hear the time 10 o'clock you know to connect and this is my main reason is you know i have uh, a lot of uh, family problems which maybe later on i'll give testimony but my desire is to counsel children with mental health family marriages and this is why I want to do the theology, the complete course, and then the additional course. And sure. I found that uh, your college is really excellent, and I'm learning so much. And I just thank each and every one of you, and I thank God. Uh, yes. Thank you, sister. Yeah. And thank you. Yes. Thank you, thank sister you. Gertrude. Uh, uh, and we appreciate you for connecting, even though it's... Uh, you know, quite late evening, you have still chosen to connect to the call today, and we greatly appreciate that. We greatly appreciate the fact that you have chosen uh, APC Bible College to study at, and may God bless you and continue to uh, strengthen you in him. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. Yeah, yeah so, another thing I want yeah. to uh, uh, ask you is uh, I'll be traveling, you know, and those days I will miss my uh, classes. 
so can i do it uh, later on when i have the time i'm in those missed days okay so as uh, to get to as we have uh, already communicated regarding the online um, courses we would want you to have an 85% attendance so kindly keep that in mind even if you miss, miss a few classes the overall aggregate of your attendance has to be 85% so that is a requirement for you to clear your course so please keep that in mind if you do miss a few sessions that should be all right uh, but if it goes beyond 85 then you know for you to get a course completion will be difficult uh, so okay. i hope that answers thank your question you. thank you thank, thank you. you so much thank you thank you sister uh, just to add to uh, yes. Nancy to what get to just ask if she can catch on with the lectures uh yes the lectures will be posted on the google classroom so you could listen to uh, any lecture that you missed sure yeah thank, thank you. you thank you pastor selena that's good um so let's uh, um continue and uh, if there are questions, please go ahead and post them. I can see, uh, 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 is that a question from Lucy? My question is, how do we answer the people when people ask why God is allowed something to pass? Why is he silent? How to convince them? So this is the question that Lucy has. She's asking, how can we explain or answer to people when they say uh, that, you know, God has allowed something to happen, something, um, you know, some, something um, bad that has happened? Uh, how do we explain this to people? So I just want to request uh, any of our faculty to please go ahead and address this question. Pastor Deepika, uh, would you please be able to take up Lucy's question? Yes. Um, yeah, Lucy, this is a very valid question because um, uh, people ask us, why is it that I have placed my faith in the Lord and yet he has allowed, permitted this particular uh, event to take place, you know, in my family's life or something of the sort. Uh, so uh, what we can... Um, assure them of is you know remind them of all the verses that we have which speak of the great faithfulness of the lord uh, so the lord chooses to operate in his own way um, um, he works in different people's lives and circumstances differently so uh, that is his choice in his you know all uh, wise uh, wisdom uh, which has no limits and even though he has the power to do absolutely anything whenever he wishes, he chooses in his great wisdom to use his power to work in our situations um, according to his perfect will. And because his thoughts are much higher than our thoughts, sometimes we don't quite understand why he is choosing to operate in a certain way. But we have all these scriptures to, uh, to assure us and strengthen us and comfort us in the meantime you know we all these verses which speak of his great faithfulness and his love that endures forever endures through even the toughest circumstances that we you know uh, could face so uh, when anyone asks why is it that i have not uh, why uh, why has he not intervened in my situations yet or why is he being silent and has not uh, spoken and done something uh, we can always say uh, the lord will work in his ways but uh, he has promised us that he is a god of faithfulness and we see his character very clearly reflected in all of the scriptures so we hold on to that uh, we hold on to who he is uh, and um, you know we look at all the examples of what he has done for people in the bible when they called out to him and uh, we just hold on in faith uh, because everything that is presented in the scriptures is truth and we can trust it 100%. And uh, even as we continue to wait in faith, the Lord will work out things in his time. So we need to uh, you know, uh, submit to his sovereignty and allow him to work in his own way. So if he is choosing to be silent for a, a short season, uh, he has some perfect purpose in mind for that. So we trust in him 
we trust in who he is we trust in uh, what he has shown of himself in the scriptures and uh, so we, we can uh, you know maybe use uh, can uh, these... i just interrupt uh, please, go ahead, yeah. please go ahead please go ahead so I, I think i think the question is you know if you put it very simply the question is why is there evil in this world so uh, it's uh, so i think what the person asked is you know why why are bad things happening in this world when you say there's a good god why are there evil why is there evil happening in this world there's war there are all kinds of evil happening we see that happening in our own nation so when we say god is there when you say god is sovereign when you say god is in control the question is why are bad things happening in this world whether it's whether it is at a personal level or whether it's you know something outside around us so i think the correct answer again you're looking at it from scripture one is the fact that god is not doing all this you know god is not the one committing wars and crimes and wickedness why do those things happen for several reasons one there is sin in this world and man essentially is sinful so a lot of the evil that we see in this world it's not god doing it it's sinful man doing it why do people go to wars why do people kill steal commit crime uh, abuse women like we've seen in our own country why is that happening it's not god doing it it's sinful man who is doing it then somebody says why is god allowing it because god is we see he's given humans the freedom to choose you know the very fact that he allowed adam and eve to sin he didn't come in and stop it he just let it happen why because he created humans with the freedom to choose so why is there evil in this world one because people are sinful people commit evil things second the devil is active in this world so there are a lot of things that are happening it's the devil's work it's not god doing it you know so we so it's the devil doing it and the thief comes to steal kill and destroy so god is sovereign but he has permitted the devil to operate on the earth for this given time and the devil is doing all kinds of evil things this will come to an end when you know we see in revelation the 20th chapter when when jesus comes and sets up his kingdom the devil's you know work of terror on the earth will come to an end but until such time evil is happening it comes against believers and non believers it's the devil doing it we don't say god is doing it it's the devil doing it the third reason why evil is happening in this world roman chapter 8 paul explains that from the fall everything went into a state of corruption that means everything god designed everything beautiful in the garden there was no sin there was no sickness there was no uh decay of any sense any sort so god created everything perfect that is his will that is his intent but since the fall everything went into a state of corruption so that's why people are born with deformities god didn't make them like that but why are people born with deformities why are people born with abnormalities why does our body wear out god didn't design our body to wear out but why does the body wear out because roman chapter 8 explains from the fall corruption has set in and all of creation is subject to corruption there is a process of decay that has caused everything in this world to deviate from its original design so god is sovereign god is absolute but in the world today there are three things that are that are happening one sin is at work through human beings the devil is at work and there's a process of corruption so these are the reasons why evil is happening and god for this time has allowed these things to go on and um, should be is god responsible for this no god is not doing it right uh so what should the belief so that's how we can explain to somebody who's asking the question you know why does a good god allow bad things to happen in this world it's not god doing it but he's permitted this and we know the end of the story revelation the 20th chapter as a reference earlier says all this is going to change there's going to be a new heavens and a new earth but there will be no wickedness no sin no pain none of these things right so in the midst of all this what should the believers respond if somebody asks okay what should the believer the believers should stand up against this the believers should not accept this and say this is god doing it to me that's not the believers response the bible says we have to resist the devil the bible says that we resist sin the bible says we need to 
you know, believe God. He's our Jehovah Rapha, our healer, our provider. So God is at work countering the effects of sin, Satan, and the corruption that's in this world. I hope that puts things in perspective. Uh, you can ask a follow-up question if you wish. Sorry to interrupt you, Deepika. Thanks. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, thank you, Pastor Ashish. Uh, and thank you, Pastor Deepika, um, for answering Lucy's question. Lucy, uh, we hope that uh, uh, your, your question has been addressed uh, completely. If you have anything more to ask, you, you may do so. Can see her uh, comment on the chat. She says, "Thank you, Pastor." So, all right, yeah, it's been addressed. Thank you, Lucy. Uh, I will get back to uh, chat here. Uh, Pankaj Hajong has posted. My name is Pankaj from Assam. I thank APC from the core of my heart because it's a uh, it's a blessing for me. I was always wanted to do theology studies, but I could not go for it due to the lack of finances. But God has blessed me with this precious college. I really thank from my heart in Jesus' name. Thank you, Pankaj. We are so glad to know that you're being ministered to through the college. Uh, and we pray that uh, you know God will uh, continue to lead you and strengthen you uh, in himself. Uh, we have another uh, comment here from Sanjay. He says, good morning to everyone. It's been about a week since I started my classes at APC Bible College. I'm returning to college after nearly 30 years, and it's truly a blessing to be a student here. The faculty is excellent, and the teaching is inspiring. I love the course curriculum, which is truly refreshing. It's like attending church every day for me. Give my regards to the entire faculty at APC Bible College. You're a blessing to us students. Thank you, Sanjay. So encouraging to uh, hear from you. God bless you. Uh, I, uh, is there someone who raised their hand to ask a question? If so, uh, please go ahead. You may ask your question. OK. Um, all right, uh, Supradeep Das um, has introduced himself. Yeah, nice that you're here on this call, Supradeep. Good to have you. Uh, Susie Bilu says, how do I respond to a very devout uh, uh, Hindu friend who's recently diagnosed with stage three breast cancer, who keeps telling me about the strength she finds in her devotion to her gods. She's open to Bible verses and messages too. So how to communicate about um, God and uh, his nature to someone who believes in uh, other philosophies and has a strong faith in, in those philosophies, how to speak to them. OK. All right. So Susie, uh, uh, I just want to clarify, you want, you want to share uh, about Jesus with this friend? Is is that your specific question? Yeah, yes, Pastor. Okay. She's open to, uh, you see, tells me to, you know, she waits for any Bible verses that I share with her. Mm -hmm. But then she also talks about the joy she gets out of all the uh, online um, meditation sessions. So all right. Attends. Okay, thank you, Susie. Uh, I'll leave it open for our faculty. If anyone wants to step in and address this, please do. Can I? Uh, can I just say? Um, yes, please, Pastor. Yeah. Yes. So I'm I'm actually driving now, so please forgive the if there's any noise in the back. Um, yeah. So, uh, Susie, what we would do is, you know, uh, it, it's a very very sensitive, you know, time in in a person's life like this. They're fighting cancer, and so one is, of course we need to uh, emotionally you know come alongside them meaning support them emotionally and we don't want to speak anything that would be hurtful uh that would uh you know damage or in any way affect their their own you know whatever journey they're making if they're drawing strength emotional strength from whatever source leave it at that don't you know we shouldn't push that but as believers, you know, what would our, you know, what should we be sensitive about? One is uh, for their own salvation. That's the most important thing, right? Um, 
whether they get healed and come out of the cancer or you know if if, if it's in, in a very if it's in a terminal stage and they're going to die uh, the most important thing is their eternity where they're they going to spend eternity so our goal should be uh, just to share the gospel of jesus christ you know we uh, we can never force anybody to receive christ we can never uh, you know uh, that that conviction is a work of the holy spirit the spirit of god who convicts the world of sin righteousness and judgment you know john 16 verse 8 to 11 so what we should do is you know because she is open uh, to listening to scriptures and all, try to primarily share the gospel uh, talk to her about you know eternity about salvation about salvation through faith in jesus christ present that to her uh, see if she is open um, the other aspect of course is to believe god for healing for her and again we want to do this in a way that is you know that shouldn't hurt her but just say can i pray for your healing in the name of the lord jesus and 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 uh, um, and try to bring a try to pray for her uh, for her healing uh, and also just point her to the stories of Jesus in the gospel where uh, people were healed from all kinds of sicknesses and all kinds of diseases. So uh, this would be a good approach. One is to focus on her eternal salvation. Second is to encourage her faith in Jesus through the healing stories of the gospel, people in the gospels to bring her to see if she wants, she's open. We can't force healing on somebody just like we can't force salvation on somebody, but at least to see if she's open to receiving healing and we pray for her and leave the rest to god you know everything we do in love in compassion and respectfully uh, and uh, leave the the work in our heart to the holy spirit uh, that's uh, that's what i would share thank you so much Oscar. Uh, thank you susie for the question and uh, pastor ashish for uh, addressing it uh, here in our chat we have a uh, post from Shivakumar S. Uh, he says, good morning, everyone. My name is Shivakumar. The classes are helping me in edifying my spiritual life, making me understand the scriptures and apply it to my life. Every day listening to word of God is amazing thing. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm very glad to hear that, Shivakumar. Uh, and we pray that you, know, you will continue to, to listen to God's word and continue to grow deeper in your intimacy with him. Uh, let's, um, you know, uh, feel free to ask uh, any other questions that we may have or even some uh, comments, discussion points that you'd like to bring up. The time is open. All right, so while we wait uh, for the next question, uh, we will ask uh, Pastor Deepika if you can bri briefly share you know, how it's been for you teaching your classes in this semester. Uh, yeah, um, I've taken two classes uh, this week, and the response has been good. Uh, I can see that the students are really uh, interested uh enthusiastic so i uh, you know that's very encouraging uh it you know it'll also motivate me to go the extra mile prepare more uh you know try and see how i can uh address the issues that they would have through the you know the lessons that i am covering so it's been uh, very uh encouraging uh yeah and um it would be good if the you know while we are doing the class the students also can give uh, their thoughts and ideas about what is being shared because that would make it so much more interactive so i look forward to that uh, you know where uh, others also uh, can raise a hand and uh, share their opinions on uh, the topics that we are discussing uh, so that the whole thing can become so much more interactive so yes i'm looking forward uh, to the classes that are going to be coming up yes thank you Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Pastor Deepika. Nice to hear from you as well. Earlier, uh, Pastor Salima had uh, shared. Uh, and we pray that you know, God will strengthen you as you minister his word in each course. Uh,
All right. Uh, so if anyone wants to share about their experience uh, in the last 10 days of uh, attending classes, you can talk about that as well. Right. And in the uh, chat section, there's a question from Daniel. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, he says, are the Christian denominations necessary? Why do we have this in Christianity when Jesus is only one? Why do we have denominations? Is it necessary? So if any of the faculty would like to take it up, we, we can. Uh, Pastor Selena, uh, can I please request you to address Daniel's question? Yes, uh, Pastor Dancy. Uh, thank you, uh, Daniel Oliver, for your question. Uh, so basically, uh, you know, various uh, Christian uh, denominations uh, came about or aroused because of various historical, uh, theological, and uh, also cultural uh, factors. So uh, over time, you know, uh, there were different interpretations of certain theological concepts uh, that have led to the formation of uh, denominations. And these uh, differences might include like, you know, beliefs about sacraments, the nature of God, uh, salvation, also the role of the church and more. Uh, also historical context uh, throughout history because of various events, debates and uh, you know, theological disputes that have contributed to a uh, kind of development of various uh, Christian groups. And also there were various theological controversies uh, that led to, you know, uh, the emergence of new denominations. Um, as believers, you know, they sought to just uphold what they believed were correct, uh, correct, sorry, correct interpretations of scripture. Also, maybe because of worship uh, styles or practices, uh, different worship styles, liturgies, and practices that can, uh, you know, uh, uh, that vary among various Christian uh, communities. Uh, so, you know, some denominations prefer traditional liturgy worship, while others, uh, you know, contemporary uh, worship styles. Also, there is uh, cultural influences. You know, Christianity has spread to different regions of the world uh, in various cultural contexts, which have influenced various Christi uh, Christian practices or the way Christianity has to be practiced. Um, and so this has led to the creation of various uh, denominations uh, that reflect cultural contexts in which they were developed. Also, uh, you know, uh, different denominations have come about because of uh, church governance, um, maybe, you know, some hierarchical structures uh, led by bishops or, you know, some congregations are just autonomous. They just don't have all this hier hierarchical structure of uh, church governance. Um, it can also be that various denominations have arose because of the way that, uh, you know, uh, in they interpret scriptures. Um, certain denominations interpret scripture uh, in, in, in their own understanding, so we can differ in that, uh, which has led to the formation of uh, denominations. Also, difference in opinions on, um, you know, uh, social, ethical issues that have led to various formation of uh, uh, denominations, uh, you know, whether it is... Uh, uh, you know, like human rights, gender roles, uh, and, and, and more. But uh, yes, you know, uh, even as we have various differences among the denominations, uh, you know, that uh, it's important that uh, these denominations at least believe in the, uh, you know, uh, scriptures and what, how they interpret it right, uh, also that they believe in the Trinity, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, so it's not that these denominations have uh, come about uh, because they don't believe in in the existence of one God or also that they don't believe in the entire truth or uh, uh, of Scripture. Uh, but it's because of these various, you know, uh, reasons that uh, the denominations have come which helps them to uh, worship this uh, this triune god this god who is one in their own 
uh, cultural setting, historical setting, or the challenges that they have uh, gone through. So, but it's important that, irrespective of the various denominations, it's important to see whether you know they are not going away from the truth of scripture. What is revealed in scripture, there is no false doctrines that is being taught. And also they hold on to the truth that we believe that God is one and in the Trinity. As far as that is there, it's fine. And also it's important that these denominations don't work in their own isolation, but they also connect with others. They are willing to partner, uh, you know, uh, 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 with other churches in the city, uh, a city-wide church uh, bringing about unity and uh, oneness, irrespective of their own uh, way or style of worship. I hope that helps, Daniel. Okay. Uh, yes, Daniel says, uh, thanks, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor Selena, for that uh, comprehensive uh, answer to the question. I'd just like to add uh, to what Pastor Selena said. Uh, I'm reminded of uh, the passage from Ephesians chapter 4, uh, verses 3 to 6. I will post it on the chat for us. It says, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace, there is one body and one spirit, just as you were called in, in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you also. Though there are various denominations for all the reasons that Pastor Selena listed, um, we know that we have uh, one God, one Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, so thank you, Daniel, uh, for that. Uh, Can I just interrupt question. here? Yes, um, yes Pastor. Uh, the question is, uh, I mean, um, Selena did a good job on saying why there are denominations. So the question mm -hmm. is, are these denominations necessary? Necessary. Could you please address that? Yes. Uh, so the denominations, as Pastor Selena pointed out, uh, uh, for various reasons, maybe because of uh, I think the, uh, what, yes. let's 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 keep it simple. So the answer is Christian denominations are not necessary. Mm -hmm. and that's a simple answer, right? Okay. So we don't need Christian denominations. Jesus didn't set up denominations. He built mm -hmm. his church. Yes. So our Christians, our Christian denomination. The question was. Are Christian denominations necessary? The answer is they are not necessary. Somebody sure. can follow Jesus without being part of mm -hmm. a Christian denomination. Christian denominations are man-made, as you know, I was explaining, mm -hmm. but um, they're not necessary for a Christian faith. And uh, there are, you know, there are the pros and cons. That like there's a good and the bad, but the basic answer is they're not necessary. Sure. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, no, no, no worries. Thank you, Pastor, for addressing the first part of the question, which uh, you know I, I missed also. Where, um, yes, are Christian denominations necessary? The answer is no. They are not necessary. Okay, and Daniel agrees to that. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, so we do have uh, about seven minutes left, so if there are more questions. We can accommodate them. So uh, let's continue. Please feel free to post your questions. Uh, can I can I ask a question? Yes, Sam, please go ahead. Um, yeah, so actually. This is from one of my cousins who's leading a church in one of the cities in India. And he kind of reached out to me to pray for him and all of that. But one of the things he was talking about is his father was the senior pastor. And he suddenly kind of passed away during COVID. And, and you know, he's been involved with his father for a long time. And now he's leading the church. And... One of the things that he's struggling with is uh, how do you maintain the expectation of the congregation? You know, his father was a very different. He would visit homes almost every day, uh, whereas his leadership style is a little different, a little more modern or whatnot. Uh, so, uh, yeah, just would like to know how you know uh, how do you kind of maneuver, uh, you know, that. And how do you encourage him? It's a very real thing 
and you know especially amongst the elders in the church he is um, you know he's also trying to kind of maneuver that uh, how to lead the church you know well after his dad so yeah that was a that's a question that i'd like to ask yes yes sir thank you for that question i'll share some uh, initial thoughts and i request our faculty to please join me um so the way i look at it is that uh, you know he would really need to uh, settle his heart uh, about what god is wanting him to do so once he's convinced that yes uh, though this opportunity has come his way uh, uh, after his father passed away this is a call from god for him to continue the work that's a place of strength he can be strong from uh, you know that that conviction secondly coming to setting the expectations of people uh, I, i believe that uh, the good things that his father may have done uh, as per the vision of the church the systems that have been put in place uh, the ancient landmarks uh, as you would call them it, it would be good for him to to maintain those things but since he uh, is a different individual with a different uh, leadership style um, he can make decisions uh you know uh, exploring the the grace and the gift that god has given him and the style that god has given him it will be a, a challenging journey but to to um uh, you know uh, be strong in god and maybe even receive counsel of elders and keep making those decisions to move the ministry forward uh, would be uh, really good and um uh, regarding the expectations of people uh, it it is it is difficult uh, to work with people when they have they already know uh, another senior minister of god and the way things were done earlier but uh, i think um, if if he can continue to do the work consistently trusting god and yeah, even maybe receiving counsel of um, good elders around him uh, eventually that that honor and respect that his father uh, got from the people uh, i'm sure that he will see uh, the same happen and uh, he he will be able to serve among the people so those are my thoughts but uh, faculty please feel free to add to this And just a quick thought um, to add to what Nancy shared. Um, so, you know, the, the core remains the same, which is we teach and preach the word of God and we uh, are ministering in the power of the Holy Spirit. And the goal is to build people up and to reach the unsaved. So the core doesn't change. And we, you know, the new leadership, there's, I mean, the younger person taking over, the son taking over, uh, doesn't deviate from that. So like those are like what Nancy mentioned, the ancient landmarks. The styles, of course, will differ. So, uh, you know, and people will slowly adapt and receive the the different way of working, the methodology, but the core remains the same. And as long as um, the, the new leader, the younger person, the son, stays true to the core, and the congregation will, you know, it's a, it's a little transition that they make in, in their minds to a different style, but they're seeing that the code is remaining the same. So they will definitely, uh, you know, adapt to it. And actually uh, the, 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 the newness of the methodology can also be very refreshing and not something to be, you know, um, not, not, some, not, not a matter of concern, but it can be something actually very really refreshing. Thank you, Pastor. And I hope, Sam, that has addressed your question. Yes, uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I, we will wrap up our call as uh, you know, all of us need to get to our classes. Uh, I'll quickly um, address Daniel's question here. He asks, does APC have online Sunday service? So our um, uh, Sunday service from the central location is live streamed, Daniel. So uh, you, you can uh, view it online. Okay, so I hope that helps. Uh, let's uh, pray together and close off for this morning. I want to request uh, Pastor Selena to please lead and pray. Okay, let's pray. 
Father, we thank you for this time. Thank you for all the students who could join the mentoring hour. We thank you, God, for uh, their thoughts and their uh, words of appreciation that has blessed our lives and has blessed our hearts. We pray, God, that even as faculty, that and as admin, uh, Bible College admin staff, that we would continue to pursue excellence and uh, uh, do what uh, things you want us to do in the way that uh, glorifies you, brings you honor, and way that uh, uplifts and encourages and uh, edifies and uh, builds our students, God, that you have entrusted to us. We thank you for each one of them. We bless them in your name. We know the challenges and the difficulties that they're going through. God, we thank you that you are a faithful God, that you are good, that you would, uh, you're upholding them with your righteous right hand, God, and that you would uh, take them through every situation and uh, difficulty and that you would prove yourself over and over faithful to them, God. And we pray that continue. We thank you for this day. We pray that even as we go into our classes, that you would continue to speak to us and bless us. We bless you. We thank you in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Selena. And thank you, everyone, for making the time to connect on the call. Uh, let, we'll continue to meet every Thursday, so look forward to meeting you once again. Bye for now. Uh, enjoy your classes. God bless.